Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with a quick video looking at the best relic items in the game. Currently, relics are non-refundable, so if you do get one of these guys, you want to make sure it's at least halfway decent because you're going to be stuck with it forever. And especially if you invest in it by refining and strengthening, it is expensive and you do not get those items back. So you want to make sure that you're getting ones that are at least decent because otherwise you're going to be stuck with a lot less gear than you should have in your account and a bad relic to show for it. So this whole tier list, once it's done, will be linked down in the description below, as well as any other resources I use or reference in the video, including my top up link, which is down in the description. If you go to that website, I'll put it on the screen really quickly here so you guys can see. You put in your server number and your UID, which can be found on the settings page right here. You put those things in and it logs you into the top up center and you can make purchases as if you're doing them in game. Now, a couple of things on that. It does support the channel. So if you do use that, you are supporting the channel, which would be very, very appreciated. But it is actually cheaper for a lot of people in different countries or depending on what platform you use, like Apple, you could save some money as well. So definitely worth checking out if you're spending in the game. If not, no shame. But I want to let you guys know that you can use that for the channel. Get stuff for cheaper. It's kind of a win-win. So that's all I got for the intro, but let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, before we jump into the actual first relic, I want to mention just the base stats that all these things have. They're going to be varying from this, but there's going to be some commander or unit stats on your relic. And these stats increase when you strengthen your relic and it is a random roll. So on this one, for example, on Sestara that I have, you can see that I have rolled HP once, I have rolled commander focus once, I have rolled commander defense twice, and I have rolled unit defense once. So I kind of got one of everything and I doubled up on commander defense, which is not very good for Sestaro. But you can get lucky and roll things multiple times. So if, if I, for example, for Staro rolled focus all five times, that would be the best case. Like the luck would be insane to have that happen. But you can roll these random stats and so they can be better or worse depending on what you get. And if you click reforge, this is what I'm talking about when you lose stuff. You can reforge and break it down to its base like this, but you do not get back your gold items. So if you look at this really quickly, these are the gold items I put into that relic to strengthen it all the way. And I, like you saw, when I go to the, the actual relic and I click reforge here, we're getting back worn out items and we're getting half of them. There is 13 here. And if I go here, there's a lot more than 13. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20. We have 25 here. So you are losing half of the items and you're only getting back worn out items if you, if you uh, reforge it and reforging it just allows you to basically reset these and try them again if you want. So in my opinion, unless you are the biggest Kraken in the game, who wants to re-roll stats like this and you have a lot of bad gear you don't want that would be the only reason otherwise it is just throwing away 12 gold items technically 25 but you get the worn out ones back so depending on what's in here it could be a bigger or a less big issue for you but anyway just want to make sure everyone was aware of how that worked because again it's kind of confusing and it can be very rng based so the other thing i will say on relics is the base stats by themselves are helpful to the commander even being unstrengthened you're adding some stats, which is not a bad thing. So technically any commanders you're using will benefit from the stats here. But what we're, what we're going to look at today in the tier list is going to be their actual effects and what they do. Because I think that's what makes them, you know, sets them apart from just being a slight stat boost to being an actual useful relic. Because the relics don't take up a slot. And if I move out of the way here, you can see that the relics have their own fifth slot. So you don't need to like take place of a weapon or whatever it is. It's just a fifth slot extra stats, which everyone benefits from. But it's the effects we're going to look at today. But Want to get that preface out of the way let's go ahead and look at the first one all right we're gonna go rapid fire after this point so we can get this done again this will all be linked down below if you want the final version we have the bladed bow for alerts as the best relic in the game it has pinned down it says commander normal attacks inflict an additional at max refinement it's going to be 125 percent physical damage anything on a relic that is percent increase or percent reduction or whatever typically those are better ones as opposed to just increasing attack by a numerical amount, which I'll show some examples of that. But 125, again, almost making it so he's just, you know, normal attacking twice, more than two times every single round is very, very good. And again, Lurtz is already a great commander. So if you were listening earlier, we'd be referencing our cheat here. I'd be making sure that Lurtz, if I'm interested, is in these tiers. He is, he's right here in the A tier, one of the better commanders in the game. The fact that Lurtz is already an A tier commander with one of the best relics makes his relic very, very, very good. But again, there are some relics you could probably make an argument for where the commander's bad or vice versa. There are good commanders and their relics are just bad. So you got to find some middle ground where they land on both of these. So again, check down below because I'll have these both so you can kind of see if your commander and relic kind of line up and are worth getting. Next up is Legolas's Bow of the Galadrim. Now, this is the exact same thing of Lurtz's, so I won't go crazy on it. But again, as you can see, 125% physical damage. 
Legolas is a little bit less useful than Lurt. I think he's still a very solid damage dealing commander, but I think Lurt hasn't beat and it's not super duper close. So uh, Legolas is one of those who I think does get a big jump with his Relic, but between those two and the Relics being the exact same, I do think Lurt is a better commander, but it's not to say that I invested in Legolas couldn't do some serious damage. All right, next up is going to be Saruman. Saruman has unrestrained power, and this is going to normal attacks inflict an additional 120% focus damage. So basically the same as those guys. First of all, it's focus damage, not physical, which we've seen be a little bit less effective. So that's why his being focus damage is behind. But again, Saruman himself, he is here in the A tier as well. So another great commander with a really good Balrog tier relic worth investing in. All right, next up is going to be Aomer's relic. Aomer's relic, although the entire mounted combination got nerfed, Aomer's still a very good damage dealer by himself. So he can still retain his status in the like, as like an A tier damage commander. And he has a very good relic. Again, the thing we're gonna look at here is it says Aomer and his formation gain the following effects in sequence. Initiative reaches 30. The next instance of damage dealt by Aomer is up to 30% extra damage, which again, percent damage increase is very good. So if you get his initiative very high, we were looking at on stream, I believe his base initiatives are, yeah, his base initiative is 24. So I think with very, very simple gear on him, he very easily reaches these marks. So um, initiative reaches 30, you get that. And this is just a flat 30% increase. We had people confirm this who are using Aomer. So again, very, very good. Then we have initiative reaching 50 mounted units in Aomer's formation prioritize attacks on enemy range units. Again, the initiative, the 30% is the thing we're looking at there. It's percent damage increase. It's very good. We have Aomer slotted here. He is in... He's in the B tier, so not as high as other ones, but I do think he has a solid relic still. So definitely one that if you're using him as a damage commander, you can definitely get great stuff out of his relic. Okay, next up is Gimli, and you should be noticing a theme that the damage commanders are definitely the ones who have the best relics because that's what the meta is. So wh whatever damage commanders do this well are going to be up here. But Gimli's uh, balance axe here, it says Gim uh, Durin's focus. Gimli gains the following effects in sequence if his focus reaches, or sorry, his attack reaches to, uh, 50, he gets a plus 6% damage. Attack reaches 100, plus 6% more damage. And if he reaches 50 focus, he gains pursuit, which can be helpful in certain situations. So an overall very easy to achieve, plus 12% damage increase. And in pursuit, that depending on who you're fighting, could definitely make or break the battle. Uh, again, you have to build your Gimli a little bit specifically if you run around the focus on him, but it can be done while still running a very attack heavy Gimli. But his is a great relic option. And looking at the list here for Gimli, he is going to be an A tier damage commander, right here, so a very good one to invest in as well. All right, next up is going to be Sistaros. We have the staff of Morgul right here, and we have Curse Weaver. It says, Commander, there is a 40% chance for focus damage plus 5%, that's the max, is plus 5%, so his focus damage has a chance to go up by a percent amount when dealing focus damage, can stack five times. So at a certain point in the battle, after he puts out a few uh, hits, which this goes pretty quickly with him, he's gonna have plus 25% focus damage, which is very, very good. The only reason this is not ranked higher uh, or that you'll see more like this is because they're kind of contingent on something happening. So it says there is a chance when he deals focus damage or someone else like Dane will say, uh, you know, attack increases once he takes damage or whatever, as opposed to the other guys who are just increasing damage across the board. That's it. So the, he needs stuff to happen. There's a little bit of RNG, but I have it. I like it. Um, it's not fully refined by any means, but it does add a little bit of focus damage going out. It's percent based. It's a good relic to go with. And Sistaro is in the A tier as well. So he's one that you can invest in if you're using pretty safely. All right, next up is going to be Gandalf the Grey. He's actually our first non-damage commander on the board, and his is a little bit confusing because it says leader of the free folk, uh, but it's not just for for uh, good commanders or good uh, troops or whatever you're using with him, but it says damage received by the commander's formation is up to negative 12%. Now, that paired with his white counts, which already reduces damage a lot, uh, paired with like an evasive action set, which will reduce damage they take by 20% uh, in the first couple of rounds, it just means that Gandalf as a support commander is going to be very, very tanky in the early rounds. And depending on how you're using him, it could be used to, again, very, very great value here with the 12%. So again, he's the first non-damage commander, but you're still seeing the trend. It's all about percent-based increase or decrease. We have not yet gotten to our just overall, like, you know, plus 20 attack or whatever. It's all about percent stuff right now. So Gandalf the Grey, he's a great one and he is a B tier support commander. So again, one of my favorite ones that you can use, he's right here. And if you're if you don't have Gandalf the White, honestly, I think you should be using Gandalf the Grey. White Council is that good, so he's a safe support investment. All right, next up is going to be Dane. Dane again, the best commander in the game, so this is only going to make him better. It says increase the physical damage dealt by this commander's formation by three percent when this formation receives damage stacks up to five times. So this is going to get up to fifteen percent damage. But like I said with Sistaro, it's not quite as good as just his being here's fifteen percent extra damage because you have to take five hits to get this. So again, not 
the best thing in the world because sometimes you want to use him in a way that he's not taking hits, so he's just there doing a lot of damage. Uh, but you can make this work very well. And again, 15% for Dane, who does so much damage, is really, really good. Again, you guys should know already, but Dane, he's up here. Honestly, this isn't even the right order I messed this up. Dane should be number one spot, so just ignore that. But Dane is the best commander in the game right now. It's not that close. All right, and last but not least is going to be Falcon. Falcon is another support. The big thing for him here is Falcon has his R5 ability, which with commander defense, he's going to reduce damage up to 30%. And it's going to get modified pretty high based on his commander defense. So the relic is just going to allow him to do that a little bit more. It's going to obviously the base stats are going to help if you get commander defense uh, in those roles. That's going to be very good. But the actual effect says reduces damage received by this formation's melee units by 1%. Increased damage dealt except to 6%. Increased damage dealt by this formation's range, your engine is by 6%. And the above effects gain 6% for each dwarf ally or dwarf unit present, stacking up to three times. So if we use different types of dwarfs in the army, this is going to get up to 18%, I believe, on this, plus these six. Correct me if I'm wrong. We, I think we talked about it on stream. I believe this gets up to 24% reduced damage for melee units. So you have 24% here. Um, and then you have this, which I've seen people say they've gotten like 95% total reduction. So it just helps him do what his kit does. And he's a support banner. So it's kind of nice to see some, some representation up there. But Falgan, again, on the list here, just so you guys can see, he is going to be a B tier support here near the end, but still solid. And he can definitely make use of a relic if you want to go all in on Falgan. All right. And this is the final version. I went ahead and put the B tier items in here as well. Again, these effects are okay. They're not, you know, world beaters, but these just the stats in general and the effects go along with what the commanders do to an extent so they're definitely ones that you can't get as well you got Bayor and Gandalf White, Sauron, Skullhelm and Elrond here so definitely check those ones out if you want to as well but I want to wrap this up before it gets too super long but again this is linked down below the overall commander tier list is ranked down below lots of stuff in the description so check it out after the video appreciate the support and as always I'll see you guys in the next video uh.